Okay, next news story. Um, this week, Ubisoft revealed a story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws, which um, I don't know if you've seen any of the gameplay footage previously, but man, this is looking like an absolutely astonishing game built on the next generation Snowdrop engine. Uh, we've also got a date. Um, I think it's August 30th, if memory serves. Mm-hmm. should have noted it on the sheet, but I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Alex, tell us what you think about this trailer. I mean... I guess it kicks off with the usual in-engine disclaimer, which basically means you could be looking at anything. But we know yeah. the pedigree of this engine at this point, and it's, it's, it's astonishing, really, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, I'm I'm, I'm really going to assume the end game is going to that we get in our hands, especially on PC, is going to look better than this trailer. And there's a lot of reasons that I'm just going to talk about right now. So I actually liked the the with the original uh, trailer we saw for this game is kind of like when we talked about it right next to when we started talking about Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora more. Uh, and then back then I've com- we commented on a number of things that we just we just showed us very well that it was real time and even back then before they announced it I was like this has to be using RTGI one thing that I actually kind of disliked about this trailer I know it's the entire purpose of the trailer is to introduce you to the world introduce you to the the good guys and the bad guys and the gray neutral characters and all these things but since it is uh, so vignette cut like we're just like psh, every new scene like every couple seconds you don't actually go to good sense of like a lot of like graphical quality things uh because you're seeing just like non-contiguous gameplay and or cutscene smatterings and so that makes it harder to judge certain aspects of the uh, the visual quality but i think it still looks very good and it looks pretty much the exact same uh minus a couple of things than what we saw last time around for example one time one thing that i noticed in this trailer that actually kind of bothered me uh, was the fact that depending upon the shot, motion blur was off or it is on. And it led to a semi-inconsistent presentation, I thought. Um, especially for something that is like a cinematic story trailer where it's all about that, more or less. So that's one thing I think the final game is going to look better. Like, I don't think they're going to let you... Well, they may let you turn it off on console, but I think it's going to be like on by default and it's going to look good. Uh, okay. What uh, I really liked uh, that you there, you could still see aspects of the GI in this trailer, especially in the one shot with like the stormtroopers and this like they're like in the alley. I don't know. The, yeah, the alley shot. I yeah, think that's yeah. like where you see from above, like that it's being skylit primarily, and that's something that's pretty hard to do without uh, RTGI in a good way. Uh, one thing that actually kind of bothered me, I actually like the main character design quite a bit, and I think it looks a lot like super retro Star Wars stuff. It's like person looks like they're straight out of like 1981. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> but uh, there's a thing that happens with the cutscene lighting in this game. And I don't think it's, I don't know if it's intentional or not, where I'm going to send this shot to Oliver. I think this is a great looking shot of the main character. I actually posted on Twitter the other day. But um, this is a good looking shot of the main character. It just looks pretty lifelike and, you know, all these other things. But if you look at this shot that I'm sending to Oliver right here, the second shot, I'm going to call it Uncanny Valley. And the reason for that actually has a lot to do with like the eye lighting. Where, for example, like with like a usually in like standard broad daylight or even just this like this is an indoor shot. But like usually one thing is you can see the difference between the iris and the pupil very easily in people's eyes. Uh, You can see that there's like a difference in color and variation and also depth of lighting. So it gives you that sense. But here in this shot, you've kind of got like pinpoint specular on the eyes. And sorry, I'm, I'm complaining about something really minor here, but it gives an uncanny valley effect, which is what I think some, a couple of people reacted to this trailer about. But basically, it's hard to differentiate between the pupil and the iris. And so it looks like the entire eye is like completely dark. And it gives them a very inhuman, like atavistic look, almost like something you'd see out of like a like a horror movie. Uh and I think that was a little off-putting in a couple shots in the trailer. And I think it's mainly lighting-driven because other shots don't have this issue. So it has to do something with the eye shading and the way it reacts to light. I don't know. Uh, but it gave off a couple of the main character shots looked a little awkward as a result of that. Um, I think this game, I'm very excited to see how it looks. Uh, I love the, the design of a lot of Star Wars media, just the way the environments looks. And it seems to pick up on that. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be, for example, like um, Jedi Survivor, where like a huge part of the the game is going to be watching a lot of really well, ridiculously good looking cutscenes. I think this that's more like a back burner aspect of this. It's not so important. 
I think it's mainly going to be like the world stuff, which this trailer didn't show off nearly as much and as well as the first trailer did. Uh, so yeah, that's really all I had to say about that. I just wanted to comment a little about about the uncanny valley effect that I got with the main character in this trailer. Mm-hmm. Okay, Oliver, thoughts? Yeah, I had all the all the same thoughts. Really, I think the, the story trailer isn't maybe the best way to show this game off because the character rendering is like not as strong and in certain lighting conditions you do get a little bit of that uncanny valley effect especially in the main character i i think overall the character rendering is not quite up to the same level as a title like Jedi survivor probably would be i still think it looks really good but it's just not quite up to that same level and there are some issues with things like shadow aliasing which hopefully the pc version will address to some degree maybe that's just an artifact of the console build maybe this is a console build or they're showing console like settings i think that's probably the case here and then, yeah, for some reason, there's like motion blur turned on and turned off, and that's a little bit strange. <laughs> but I think overall, the game looks really good. Anything that looks more like gameplay looks fantastic. Some of the panning shots look amazing. Um, all the explosions, VFX, cities, that all looks amazing. I'd like like to have seen more gameplay in line with that initial trailer because I thought that looked fantastic. And the game in motion, I think, will be more, one of the more compelling titles this year. So... Yeah, I just think it's like it's a bit of a weird showcase for this kinds of this game's visuals. I think like Avatar really where it's going to look most compelling is in those gameplay sequences and not as much in the cutscenes. Uh not to say the cutscenes look bad, but just that like the real appeal for me here is like seeing that beautiful open world with the RTGI and I think the RT reflections as well. We can talk about that in a moment. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that's really the appeal here, not so much like the can cinematic sequences. Agreed. Cool. Um, Alex, do you think this is like, uh, well, it is the same engine as Avatar. Are there any enhancements that you're seeing there over and above Avatar? Uh, through Via the trailer, um, no. Other than uh, Avatar didn't really have a lot of uh, hair rendering other than like Navi ponytails and things like that. So the yeah. one thing we get to see on the, the main character, which is one of the less than stellar aspects, is like there is a bit of like movement in the hair and stuff when it moves around. It's not, it also reaches Uncanny Valley stuff, but it's, and from a third person camera in a game like this, it's actually going to look good. The thing is, it doesn't look good magnified, I think, in the cutscenes, which is something Oliver just said. Like this, I don't think that's the game's strength in its visuals and the, the, the video isn't doing a good uh, good way of showing that off. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is that this is, and there's a, once again another NVIDIA blog about this, and we talked about this earlier, is this is going to be, unlike Avatar, Avatar was AMD sponsored, this one's going to yep. be NVIDIA sponsored, uh, which I always generally just prefer because there's a different uh, kind of appreciation for PC exclusive features for NVIDIA sponsored games. Like that's how we get Cyberpunk patch racing. That's how we get Alan Wick, uh, or, you know, patch racing kind of stuff. Um, and so here they're actually going to be implementing RTX DI, which will take care of one of my like pet peeves with Avatar. And I guess with this trailer too, and Oliver mentioned it, it was like shadow quality is not 100%. And it's one of the things that kind of lets it down. Uh, visually versus other aspects of the game. Uh, and I think here, RTX DI can do a lot of things in a Star Wars universe-based game, arguably more than it could do in Avatar. Uh, there's a lot of like glowing neon. There's a lot of little point lights. There's a lot of emissive surfaces in Star Wars, just in general. And these like aerial light features, which games either have to fake or have, be, have them be shadowless, um, it could actually lead to scenes looking very, very different. Uh, more so, less ones in the broad daylight, but more so those in the uh, kind of like nighttime indoor environments, which this game apparently has a number of shots of. So I'm, I'm very interested to see that, um, see what it does to the visuals on the PC version. A curious thing that I mentioned also like the last time we talked about this game is it currently doesn't have DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction uh, as a part of the announcement of its features which is very curious the game support is going to support dlss3 unlike avatar which doesn't right now um and it's going to support frame gen as a result of that i think that's what it's implying yeah. um but not having 3.5 ray reconstruction while using rtx di is a curious decision and i don't know why it is 
We'll see when the game comes, what that looks like. But I could imagine, given how much ray tracing there already is here, DLSS ray reconstruction could be actually a great boon to the game's visuals. So I'm curious about what that's all about. But there's still a good time between now and August for things to change. And maybe it'll include it, or maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still somewhat baffled by the lack of DLSS 3 frame generation in Avatar. Uh, when yeah. it has FSR three, I mean, we're kind of going back to the you know when this happens. There's always the suspicions that any particular sponsorship may be precluding features from the other vendors always, yeah, uh, being in there, and that sort of stood out a bit as as being slightly weird and wrong. There's no real technical reason I can think of why you would have one and not the other and you do have DLSS <laughs> yeah yeah that. and I, when I look back at Alan Wake or even well there's this kind of weird limbo thing going on right now with FSR 2.21 and 3 and 3.1 is that right now if there was a period of time where if you were wanted to integrate FSR 3 you knew at least from AMD internally if you were talking with them that there's a newer version of FSR 3 coming down the way that is going to improve like fundamental things like like with the original Immortals of Avium release and Forspoken, they're using like that like kind of beta -y version of FSR3, which we had a lot of issues with. Um, and if you were starting your integration then for FSR3, you would know there was one in the future that would be supporting VRR. And if you started one now, you know there'd be one in the future that is also like agnostic for FSR2. Uh, the, the FSR 3.1 version of FSR 3 frame gen is going to allow you to use things like DLSS or TAA. You know, so like, it's just like, I understand it a little bit on the AMD side of things, but DLSS 3 frame gen right now is so like proven. And if you're already doing these like back end legwork to get frame gen in a game, the inputs are going to be pretty much the exact same for FSR, th uh, sorry, for DLSS 3. So I don't know why devs are not including it. I, I would still mm -hmm. like to see stuff like Cyberpunk, though, <laughs> updated to have FSR 3 frame gen, though. I don't know why it hasn't, actually. Yeah, I agree. And similarly, you know, Star Wars Outlaws, you'd hope it has FSR 3 as well. I hope it does, you know, yeah. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, anything to add, Oliver? Yeah, on the technique side of things, I did take a look through this trailer with a bit of a fine-tooth comb, and I did see a couple shots that made me think of certain things. Like at oh, 1 minute cool. 26 seconds in the trailer, this is a little bit, you know, very freeze-framey, but if you look at the yeah. right-hand side of the screen there, the main character's body isn't visible in the reflection when the little animal is in front of her, but the box uh, yeah. is. And then That's when cool. she moves away, or when the little animal moves away, the full reflection of her comes into view. So I think that might suggest a similar RT uh, reflections implementation to Avatar, where skinned objects aren't represented in the RT, but other parts right. of the world are. And you actually see some pretty obvious SSR in general. Um, so I think that like that's more plausible. And then when you look at some of the reflections in various shots, like at one minute and like I think like at around two minutes, two minutes, nine seconds, you see RT reflections or what look like RT reflections to me on bodies of water that look a lot like avatars. So that kind of makes me think of, yeah, they're doing something similar to avatar, which is like, obviously that's the default assumption, but I did, <laughs> I do think that's the yeah. case here. And I'm assuming RTGI is in here for a variety of reasons, like that shot at 22 seconds with the stormtroopers in the alley. Um, it just looks really, really good. And I'm reminded a little bit of FF7 Rebirth where it's like, yeah, <laughs> you don't have a RT reflection or RTGI in a open world console game with like a lot of these complex environments and difficult uh, geometry and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. You actually end up with a game that's pretty hard to light. So yeah. just anytime I see a good looking open world game with consistent lighting, I'm always thinking like, could this be uh, could this be RTGI? Because otherwise it's tough to do, right? Yeah, it's very tough. And you're reminding me of that. That's a really good point. Like on the console version and on all the way up to the ultra mode on PC, skinned objects are not included in the BVH and they're done via screen space, either like SSGI or SS screen space reflections. And one thing that RTX DI, which, you know, one thing it requires kind of, and I'm curious to see what this means for the game, is it requires actually a very accurate BVH because shadows and small shadows require accurate BVH for them to look good. And RTX DI is all about shadowing. So I'm curious if the RTX DI in this game, when you enable that path on PC, 
if it's going to use an entirely different BVH than like the traditional game, which, as I pointed out back then, is simplified in terms of geometry at times. Uh, on lower modes, it's missing things like skinned objects. Uh, even when you turned it on the max setting, I noticed that the skinned objects that were there, they were one, they were the full quality of the like the full skinned character, but they were also like I think they only updated at like like one every sixth or one every fifth frame or something like that. So it was like obviously like they were trying to save a lot on that BVH, even on the PC version at max settings. So what does this mean? Is this gonna have like, it could be like a ridiculously heavy game actually with the RTX <laughs> DI on, that means, yeah. Well, I was just thinking Alex, so uh, Avatar had uh, unobtainium settings, right. which was like a command line that activated proper alt for. I'm fine with that, as I said. I yeah, I think what we need for this is like a Palpatine style unlimited <laughs> power. Unlimited, <laughs> please do that. Come Listen on, to switch. us. Unlimited power, name it that. Something, what's another good Palpatine quote? I don't know. Something like oh, there's hundreds. Un unexpected, you know. It, it could just be a good. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm excited. yeah, Star Wars Outlaws. I mean, it is looking terrific, no doubt about it, even with the various critiques. But I get what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. When, the thing is, when you're pushing that hard and, and you're seeing kind of what could be construed as almost low hanging fruit, to, mm. just tiny tweaks that could make the difference, then, you know, absolutely. Yeah.